In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve for inequalities. Now, the short answer is this. You basically solve an inequality the exact same way you'd solve that problem if it was an equal sign instead, except there's just one little thing that you have to do. And that little thing is that if you're ever multiplying or dividing by a negative number on both sides, then you just flip that inequality, which means if it's less than or equals, then you change it to become greater than or equals. Similarly, if it's less than, then you change it to become greater than. And again, you only do that when you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So let's uh, start doing this problem and see what we get. So again, looking at this, it's okay in your mind to like replace this guy with an equal sign. What would you do if that was an equal sign? Well, you'd subtract four from both sides, right? So we're gonna subtract four from both sides. Now, this right here is probably one of the most common mistakes that people make when solving inequalities. They remember something about that rule about, oh yeah, you gotta flip it when there's some negative. And so what they'll accidentally do is, whatever they're subtracting from both sides, they'll flip the inequality then. But keep in mind, that only applies if it's multiplying or dividing by a negative, not when adding or subtracting, right? So here, if we're subtracting by four, even though it's a minus, we're not gonna flip the sign. On the left-hand side here, the four is canceled, so we just have two x. Keep the sign as is, less than or equals. And here on the right-hand side, we have three minus four, which is a negative one. All right, now to get x by itself, we gotta divide both sides by two. And again, even though there's an equal, a negative on the right, we're dividing both sides by a positive number, positive two. So again, we're not going to flip the sign. So x is less than or equal to negative one divided by two, which is negative one half. And that is our final answer. X is less than or equal to negative one half. Now, one comment here on notation. There's something called interval notation, which is just a different way to represent this inequality. This inequality is basically saying that x is any number less than negative a half. If you imagine a number line, it's basically saying wherever negative one half is, x is everything to the left of it, meaning it starts really at negative infinity, right? Negative infinity is the starting point, and uh, it goes all the way up to negative one half. And since this is uh, this inequality has an equal sign in it, that means that it includes the negative one half. So here you kind of make a square bracket like that. So here's how you write this in interval notation. You basically say that x starts at negative infinity and it ends at negative one half. But because it includes it, we're gonna do a square bracket on the negative one half. If this did not have a equal sign here, this would have been like a soft, like a smooth bracket around it, smooth parentheses around it. With the infinity or the negative infinity, it's always a smooth parenthesis. So here, our final answer is that x is in this interval. Some, some textbooks and teachers go as far as to say that x is in this sort of backwards e means, uh, or kind of e sort of thing means uh, uh, an element of, which means x is an element of this range. x belongs somewhere in this range, somewhere from negative infinity to negative one half, possibly including negative one half. All right, now let's uh, answer a different question here. Let's do this guy. So again, first we're gonna solve this the same way we would any equation with if this was equals, right? So we'd wanna get all the x's on both sides so we could subtract eight x from both sides. And again, adding or subtracting doesn't flip the sign. So that's not gonna change the sign. This is still gonna be greater than. But here we're gonna have six x minus eight x, which is negative two x minus four, and then on the right-hand side, we just have six. Now we're gonna add four to both sides to get rid of that. So that's just gonna be negative two x here. So negative two x is greater than six plus four is 10. All right, now we have to divide both sides by this negative two, right, to get x by itself, which means because we're dividing by a negative, we're gonna flip the sign. So instead of greater than, it's gonna become less than. So this is now gonna be x is less than, and 10 divided by negative two is negative five. So our final answer is this, x is less than negative five, which in interval notation would be negative infinity 
till negative five, but both our clothes are smooth parentheses now because this does not include negative five in our answer. All right, now let's do one, one last uh, one here. X squared is less than or equal to four. Okay, so here it's going to be a little bit, a little weird. So here's the other, the final sort of rule that you got to know about inequalities when they involve a square. Now, if you're like new to these things, you might be like, oh, don't you just take the square root of both sides? And you're like, oh yeah, x is less than or equal to square root of four is two. And then you're like done, right? But you might remember if you've done these types of problems with squares that, oh, you got to do the plus and the minus, right? Because plus and minus two, both of them squared gives you four. So you might think, oh yeah, that's got to be plus or minus two, right? So now you just got to take this one step further. Whenever you have a square with an inequality, you're basically going to split this into two inequalities. One is, so basically you're doing the plus and the minus in different inequalities because for the negative version of it, it's going to be flipped. So again, instead of plus or minus two, you're basically, and so instead of x is, less than plus or minus two, you're going to do x is less than two and x is greater than negative two. So again, all we're doing is instead of the square root of this being plus or minus two, we're splitting the right hand side of being plus two and minus two, we're splitting it and we're flipping the sign only for the negative version of it. We're keeping the same sign for the positive version of it. Right? So that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing, flipping it for the negative version, but we're splitting up into two for the plus and the minus. And now from here, we could just solve what we're already done. So here, this is saying x is less than two. So if we were to look at like a number line, it's like x is to be less than two. So if this is like zero, two, and negative two, x is less than two. So that's like everything here, right? So we might even say negative infinity to two. Uh, I guess this would be a square bracket because it includes two. And here, x is greater than negative 2. So if this is to the right of negative 2, so negative 2, but then to the right of it, that's everything here. That's going to be negative 2, but to the right of it, so all the way to positive infinity, right? negative 2 to infinity. But if you think about it, x has to have both of these conditions met, not just uh, either of them. So to have both of these conditions met, you got to be sort of within this range, right? In this overlap between negative 2 and positive 2. Right? So you could write this as like negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 2. The way to read this is that x is between negative 2 and 2, which again is more easily represented in interval notation here. But you can kind of go back and even like look at your answer and make sense of it. If x squared has to be less than 4, and that's our only rule, um, numbers that you could think of that are between negative 2 and 2, like like 1 or negative 1, either of those would work, right? Like 1 squared, that's less than 4. Negative 1 squared is also less than 4. But the reason we can't just say x is less than 2 is because, you know, if you were to actually have a ne big negative number, squaring it, like if you had negative 6, squared would be 36. That's going to be, it's not going to be less than 4, right? So long story short, a good idea when you're done is always to check, go back at the original inequality and check if your answer makes sense. Because sometimes you might have, uh, you might detect a mistake that you made in case the answer doesn't check out.